a lot of gimmicks, a lot of head scratching moves, and we're going to get to Adam Aaron and AMC in a moment. Uh, but first, what do you think that investors should look for to sort of distinguish between gimmicks and what's going to have long term value? Hi, Deirdre. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great topic. I think there's a lot of fantasy right now, a lot of plot twists, a lot of narratives, um, which we did see two years ago. I think to distinguish, you have to look at whether a company is really focused on fixing its underlying business, A, and B, can that be fixed? You know, you see a company like AMC, you mentioned, suddenly pivoting, they're prospecting, they're doing gold and silver. It's like you have a business on fire here, and then you're just distracting with something bright <laughs> over here thinking that people will forget about what's over here. In AMC's case, what was their strategy to fix liquidity? Become a meme stock? Like, that's like saying that your strategy is to win the lottery. Um, and then, you, you know, you have Peloton, same thing. When you think about what's a good value, a lot of analysts saying Peloton, you know, down more than 80% over the last year, great value right now because it can only go up. Well, value from what? From where it was last January when everyone was going to buy a Peloton and they were going to pay for it for the next 26 years every month. I mean, that's what was priced in. So you have to really look at um, reality. Laura, you know that I love your skepticism uh, and your healthy dose of it. But, you know, we talk about an Adam Aaron, which I think a lot of people are scratching their heads this morning saying, what is going on here? But then you look at a Peloton. I understand what you're saying. Where is the value? What is the proprietary technology? Something we ask often. But you have someone coming in, like the new CEO, Barry McCarthy, who does have a lot of experience um, in subscriptions and software. Uh, you know, you have to look at those two differently, right? So when you look across the spectrum, what what could bring value? Where are you sort of less skeptical? What What's a good thing that you think someone out there is doing? Good question. I think actually to focus on Peloton, so Barry McCarthy, you know, he comes from, he was the CFO of Netflix and Spotify. These are entertainment companies uh, and they're subscription-based. And if you look at a company like Peloton, I think one of the things that held it back from getting really big and mainstream is that it's intense exercise. You know, if you have like a group of 100 Americans in a room, and you ask them to raise their hand if they do the exact same strenuous workout, the exact same type every single day or multiple times a day, and have done that for the last you know, multiple years, you might get a couple of hands. If you ask them who turns on the TV a couple times a week or who listens to music a couple times a week, I mean, I think you're getting more than half. So turning it into like an entertainment play makes a lot of sense to me. You know, Laura, it's an interesting and important thing that you're saying about be careful about these plot twists. But let's explore for a moment the moments when these plot twists have actually made sense for companies uh, and why. Okay. So I think about uh, Apple kind of moving into the iPod and, and the shift that they made toward making an iPod for Windows. Some people thought, oh, well, this is a Mac company. It turned out not to be. Or Adobe acquiring Macromedia and then Omniture trying to become an enterprise company. A lot of people thought, oh, Adobe's not an enterprise company. Well, it is now. And then Netflix moving into streaming. Uh, is there some degree, perhaps, of unpopularity of the move, but also compatibility with the core mission of the business in a lot of these pivots that actually do end up making sense? I mean, I think all of those were great examples that you gave, um, and you certainly had a lot of doubters. You know, you mentioned Apple. A lot of people said, you know, the iPhone would take off, and they were the iPad, and they were definitely wrong. But when you look at a company like Peloton, I just think it's a different story. This is an exercise company that was built as something aspirational, and they have this amazing cult following, which is niche, of people who love that aspirational, you know, price point and that lifestyle. And now it's like having an Equinox gym, right, if you're familiar, and then suddenly you make it cost the same as a Planet Fitness membership or a 24-hour fitness membership. You're going to get a lot more people in, sure, to be able to pay to subscribe, but you risk turning off the very goldmine of customers that you had initially that made the company what it was. The gold mine of customer. I wonder what you were referring to there, Laura. <laughs> Thank you, for, as always, for coming on. We'll talk to you again soon. Laura Foreman from The Wall Street Journal.